termites. Fire. Episode 153. Look at us go. My post-birthday, post-birthday um, podcast. So much yeah. fun. So many things to talk about. Like everything. All of the queens have exploded. All of the queens have exploded. <laughs> Except Tanya. Tanya. Tanya might have to go on the bench for a while. I have to find another. Not, no offense, but she doesn't do a whole, whole lot no. other than just her shows, which is fine and normal. Mm-hmm. That's what the 60 someone should be doing. Shows and that's be what normal. You strive for. Yes, that's what I strive for. Normal. Normal. Go do shows. Go home. Yep. Have fun. Um, this lady, Dana, uh, made me this giant Bigfoot for my birthday. Wow. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's super fantastical. Look, it's got the moon and stars in his head, but his the the I think the moon is supposed to be his smile, and then it's got north, south, east, west. This wow. lady's coming to the Kansas City show. Nice. Yep. So is my dad's physical therapist, Matthew. But these are just some birthday items. This is baby cat on a mug with her mouth open, and it says "fire." <laughs> <laughs> this was made by Katie. Uh, yeah, this glass is baby cat in mid yawn. Fire. She's drinking a little spotted cow. She lives in East Tennessee. Thank you, Katie. Thank you, Katie. This is perfect timing because I've been looking for a tiny notebook in this house to write down my house chores because I keep forgetting. Uh Um, This is Bigfoot on Loch Ness Monster. Perfect. Riding around. Perfect. Yes, and the card is the same. And now I have a tiny notebook. Um, This is from Jen and Steve. Nice. Yes, they, I don't know where they're from. It was on the outside, and I think I threw, threw the outside part away. Oh, talking stick. Cool. Or somewhere closer to Santa Fe. You know, somebody else said, I don't know why I don't work in Santa Fe. I have no idea. Yeah. I don't think I ever have, except corporate gigs. Do you, is there a theater there you'd love to? Yeah, there should be a theater there, right? Okay. Or, uh-huh. I don't know. I don't know. Matter, that, that's a good question. I don't know why I don't go there. Because I'd be interested. Sometimes we have to drive out of our... Well, I would fly to Santa Fe for sure for a show. Speaking of which, I added a bunch of shows. Uh-huh. Um, this guy, this made me laugh because he sent me $5. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? You never get too old um, or make enough money that you don't care about five free dollars. That's a beer at Sam's. That's, That's, That's what awesome. he said it's for, too. That's awesome. And then he sent me some seasonings so, and um, Chipotle bacon seasoning and some horseradish. What's his name? Aiden. A-I-D-A-N. Yeah, and it said from Belfast, and I thought, do people send something from Ireland? No, it's um, it's Belfast, Maine. Well, Maine's M-E, right? Yeah. Yeah. Still yeah, it counts. Well, it counts. Yeah. Then this came, and I, uh, then I'll move on, you guys. Uh, there's a t- I got every card. I got tons of cards. It was so fun mm-hmm. to open them all. I opened a bunch on the plane going up to New York. Um, this is a Dame Edna coffee mug. Oh, nice. Yes, poor Dame Edna. Hello, possums, um, <laughs> is no longer with us. Um, I did adore Dame and, uh, and and I do love, currently, Miss Richfield, still alive and fine performing. Touring. I just saw, I think, New if York. you go to her website, no, it, yeah, it was New York. Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, it's from Mike. Thank you, Mike. That's awesome. Yeah, the cards were nice. Um, these pretzels, which I'm going to be trying, gar- these are called Pop Daddy Pretzels. I've seen these in the store. I've never bought them. My friend Bronson and Gibby, they um, sent a giant thing. There's like 10 of these. Nice. This, but this is the flavor I wanted to try first. It's garlic parmesan pretzels. Nice. Very good. Yeah. Five stars? Five stars. Yeah. And I can put them in smaller bags and take them on the plane because when I have to, um, sometimes Delta doesn't go everywhere I want to go, sadly. And I have to go on Southwest sometimes. <laughs> Ah, oh, boo, 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 boo. Um, but their snacks are terrible. The Southwest, you get me where I want to go. You don't lose bags. I'll give you that. But that stale bullshit snack mix that they throw around the plane, nobody wants it. No. But people eat it because they're bored or I, they're starving. or yeah. It's like everything in their snack mix is just off enough. Like the shit my mom would just <laughs> use it. And she's like, I'm not paying for Honey Nut Cheerios. And she'd get like OEOs. And you're like, Mom, these are not Cheerios. Everybody knows that. Um, but this is what I'm going to take instead of the Southwest snack mix, which is just appalling. No, it's terrible. Yeah, how much? It couldn't cost that much to fix it. Call Rolled Gold and ask for pretzels. Right. Like everything in there. Like there's Cheez-Its in there, but they're not real Cheez-Its. No. 
they're they're like knees it's there's some <laughs> fake thing um so so much and there's a lot more stuff but i'll get to it one thing at a time because then i got swamped and um this right. stuff how was your week the weekend was great. I had to go to New York for some work stuff, which was fine and dandy. No problem there. And then, oh, I have stuff under here, too. I didn't even get to that. Um, and then my little friend Dorf came in, mm-hmm. and we got to go to Queen Stevie on Sunday night so at Madison awesome. Square Garden. It was, it's amazing. She's 75 years old. Um, every song, the set list was perfect. She sings, I sing for the thing money, can't buy that song. Yeah. I don't really, no. it's fine, yeah. but everybody kind of sits down. Maybe it's a run, get your beer song, and she knows that. I don't yeah. know. Maybe she's giving us a chance so we don't miss Landslide or Rhiannon or something great. <laughs> um, it was packed, sold out on a Sunday. Cool. Yeah, and then she has a show every three days, so she gets two days off. But well, one day's not really off because that's a travel day. Yeah. So one day off, and then she'll be in Buffalo. Cool. Yeah, I mean, Tonight? If you want to see, uh, yeah. mm, I don't remember. Okay. Yeah, and then there was a s- kind of a snap of mega proportions. Mm-hmm. I've never seen Stevie B on stage like silly, goofy, fun. Yeah, but yeah. not you know. She's usually like, "Hello, welcome," and it's always, <laughs> it's always kind of serious or whatever. Well, she's like. I'm so excited tonight because you're not going to believe this, but I brought a friend with me. Now, we're in New York, so I'm thinking, it's a human. oh, it could be Billy Joel. You know, like she's been with him lately. Harry or Styles. Harry Styles. She's in love with him, it seems yeah. like. Um, uh, no, it was not a real human. It was her own, it's my own Stevie Nicks Barbie doll. And <laughs> Mattel has made... Stevie a doll. And I think, and she goes, I was kind of surprised because as a rock star, all the things that come along with that, like addiction. Like, I'm like, <laughs> I'm sure in the meeting they're like, um, she was selling a bunch of shows saying she had a big Coke problem. Are we cool making a Barbie who's got a Coke problem? Well, not anymore. She doesn't have one. She beat it. So you went to Betty Ford. Go for you, as Rocky Laporte would say. Go for, Go for you. But good for Mattel. Yeah. They, um, she, it's a pre-order thing, and they're already sold out. Did you get one? No. Oh. No, I went online, and then my friend uh, Dory tried to get one. Um, I'm going to have to put Dorf on it. Yeah. Because he, secretly, he knows her manager. Really? Well, he doesn't really know him. He's been in meetings with him. Mm-hmm. Irving Azoff is his name. and He has the funniest nickname I've ever heard. Should I not say it? No. Why? No. I can't say it? No. I'll probably be banned from concerts or something. Probably. Um, yeah, you can Google it. <laughs> <laughs> you guys can Google it if you want to. It's just, a, it doesn't even matter. It's just funny. Um, I was like, you call him what? You can say it. No. He would probably be proud of it, though. Probably. Maybe. Well, I don't know. Men aren't proud of being no. extra short. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he's a short man. I guess. I've never seen the man. I don't know. Um, so five stars for Stevie. Yep. I'm going to try to get the Barbie doll. Out of all the termites sent it to me, well, along with all the birthday wishes on Twitter and all that stuff. Thanks for all the animal pictures too, by the way. Cause that's what I said. I like to see on my Twitter feed when I wake up on my birthday, people's cats and people's dogs or whatever goats, yep. whatever. Um, cool. it was just a, 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 a Sunday night. It's, so she's fun. unstoppable. Mm-hmm. Five years away from 80. So what fun. are we doing ladies? Yeah. She's two years away from 80. Mm-hmm. I think. Cher's having all kinds of problems with the sun. Um, and then I think, you know, these people, well, I'll tell you about Cher's thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Stevie did an interview with Vulture magazine, and there will never be a Fleetwood Mac again, because mm-hmm. she said without Christine. But you did do Fleetwood Mac without Christine for 18 years. I thought that. But now you don't want Grandpa Lindsay coming out either, because he's mean, yeah. and he mocks you. I wouldn't want that either. No. So who does that leave then? You, Mick Fleetwood, and John McVie who quit. He's yeah. in a pub somewhere drinking beer and went, yeah, yeah I'm out. Um, yeah, on a sailboat. <laughs> he apparently likes to go on a sailboat. Um, so no more Fleetwood. Matt, that's fine with me, though. Yeah. As long as Stevie's still out there, I'm good. I don't need to hear, go your own way. I'm good. I can see it to myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm also tasting this from New York. So my friend Vic Henley, who mm-hmm. passed away, comedian, yeah. uh, he awesome was human. he was so funny. 
And you should go online if you're bored. If you if you like, uh, he does a joke about Paula Dean. It's a very long bit, but it is so worth it because yeah. he's southern, and it's when she got in trouble for the racial slurs and. Uh, it's just, it's a, so if you could just Google Vic, V I C Henley, H E N L, we'll put it in the notes and Paula Dean bit. But anyway, um, Vic used to take, uh, get this dinosaur barbecue sauce. Mm-hmm. So I picked up some on the way in honor of Vic. He would have loved to have gone to CV Nicks. I felt so bad. I talked to his brother. I'm like, it's sad. Uh, it died way too young for no reason. And it's tasting delicious. It's wonderful. Yep. It's kind of hot. Yep. Little tang. Little tang. Mm-hmm. Well done, New York. Yeah. Um, we miss Vic. Yeah, and then I wanted to, um, I watched that show, The Gilded Age. Mm-hmm. Did you guys watch that? It was on HBO. It's got Christina Bransky and all kinds of good people on it. And it's about the early 1900s when the super rich were building those giant, well, Mark Twain came up with the phrase Gilded Age, but mm-hmm. I don't think they called themselves that. But um, I thought, I wonder if there's any left in New York. Because mm-hmm. I never have the whole day off in New York ever to act like a tourist. Well, I Googled it, and there's not many, and then the rain came, so it, it foiled my whole plan. I, I couldn't yeah. even go when I was supposed to go because right. all, all LaGuardia was underwater. It's, just re- it's ridiculous. <laughs> like awesome. The shit that happens these days just did not happen 20 years ago. Right. Hey, I'm going to go to the airport. Oh, no, I'm sorry. All of Terminal A is underwater. What? Wow. What? Yeah. Go look at the pictures from that. It was crazy. So anyway, I went. But if you go to the St. Regis Hotel, Mm -hmm. John Jacob Astor, who's one of the Gilded Age people, he died in the Titanic. He was going to build it as his own personal home, but he built it as, um, it was the first, like, Gilded Age hotel for tourists. I went in there. Yep, had a drink. It's gorgeous. It's There's all kinds of souvenirs. There's all kinds of um, historical things in there. The bar bar is great. Mm -hmm. I don't know that I, there's a famous painting in there, too. It's the whole back of the bar. I don't know that I would stay there. I feel like the rooms, I'm more of a Marriott person. <laughs> Let's just, can we get to the 1950s at least? Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know. It seems like it could be old people eat. I've never seen the rooms. Uh, they're nice. It's King Cole Bar. The King Cole Bar? Mm-hmm. Well, cool. I would recommend it. And I walked around everywhere. I walked over to Lewis's house. Um, New York's not that crazy. No. The media would have you believe there's like, you know, migrants sleeping in every doorway. There's homeless, crazy people everywhere. And Lou said that it's ticked up a little bit with the cray crays. Mm-hmm. Even Lewis knows. Yeah. And and he's lived there his whole life, well, since he was 21 years old. I thought it was fine. Yeah. I didn't see anything extraordinarily weird. Right. That's just my opinion, though. And, um, Good you know. Yes, yeah, a full, wonderful review. Good Every, as soon as it stopped raining, everything was fine. All right, let's move on to some Queen news. Okay. Dolly released uh, that song. I never loved it. It's fine with that lady. I can't think of it. Linda, somebody. I said, hey, hey, what's going on? Lin- Perry. Perry. Mm-hmm. That lady. Yeah. It's fine. Well, I wake up in the morning. And da, da, da. That is going to be on her album. That has been released. If you would like to go listen to Dolly sing that song. It's for now. Four non blondes, right? But Linda Perry's a lady's name, right? Yes. Like yes. she's the uh, person. Well, she was the lead singer. Well, there you go, the lead singer. You can go <laughs> listen to that. That's the main Dolly news. Share. Yeah, share. Listen to this shit. <laughs> this is crazy. And this is bullshit that age 77, Share's got to deal with this shit. She hired four. Uh, men to kidnap her son, Elijah Blue Allman. She has a son who Greg Allman was his father. Yeah. If you don't know who the Allman brothers are, go look. It's Ron Wade's favorite band ever. Um, and that's his daddy, but his dad, he's passed away. Uh-huh. Greg she has. Kidnapped she hired, kidnapped. She hired kid, four men to kidnap her troubled son from a New York City hotel where he was trying to reconcile with his wife. Documents reveal as new photos show strung out musician at the Chateau Marmont in days before taking to rehab. Hollywood Gillette Cher wow. had her own son kidnapped from a hotel just as he was trying to reconcile with his wife on their wedding anniversary. Wow. That's when your mom's got some power. <laughs> you just... You, but, I mean, he's got to be 50. Yeah. Like, I take care of my parents. It shouldn't be the other way around. Exactly. They shouldn't be 
get dragging my aunt, maybe if you're in your 20s or 30s, but come on. Totally. How old are these people going to get where you're still <laughs> behaving like a crazy person? It's ridiculous. Um, um, she was worried about Elijah Blue's health, according to the daughter-in-law, Marie Angeli, Angela King. She said in court papers, I mean, these are they're getting divorced. It's crazy. Uh-huh. Uh, she has reason to be concerned, judging by the pictures we have obtained, showing him disheveled at a different hotel, L.A.'s fa- famed Chateau Marmont Hotel, where he's been living for the last six months. How, How do much that? does it cost Whoa. to live? I have been in the Chateau Marmont maybe three times in my life for drinks. Yeah. And I, was, I love it because it's outside. The bar part's outside. You're in a jungle. I don't want to be there in the day. But at night, it's all lit up. But it's a douchebag crowd, mm-hmm. and a drink is going to be $27. Right. So it's... You're going to find me at Barney's most of the time, Barney's Beanery. If I'm in L.A., I'm, that's the bar I will be in where they have pitchers of beer and breakfast burritos and the best wings ever, and my friend Chauncey is the bartender. Yeah. That's where I would prefer to hang out. But it's nice to go fancy every now and then, and I would like to see if I saw somebody famous or something. Can you charge that to my trust fund? Yeah. yeah. Six months. What Are you a Gilded Age person where you just move into a hotel? The, the song yeah. Believe. <laughs> I can't, if I sent my parents a bill for even one night at a hotel, they'd be like, what the hell is this, Kathleen? Is this a mistake? No, Dad, can you just pay that? Uh, no. If we pay for you, then there's six other people that are going to be put, oh, the whole speech. No, no, no. Um, he's been living there. I don't, at first he, they found him out, he was passed out in front of the thing, like on the street. Mm-hmm. At first he looked like he was dead. But he, in fact, passed out, a witness said. The staff picked him up and took him inside. He's 47 years old. He's the younger of Cher's two children. He's the son of her second hand lady, uh, Greg Allman, we know. He married this Marie Angela, oh, she's 36, who goes by the name Queenie in the rock band King. In 2013, they have no children. He admitted he started taking drugs when he was 11. Wow. Wow. Who is your nanny? Wow, yeah, nanny fired. (laughs) Were you attending school like this? (laughs) Who's the 11-year-old on heroin? Um, Yeah. This lady that he's married to was born in Mumbai, India, to a British grandfather and German mother. Uh, She's one of six of the... uh, They spent... Time he did a gig, he, he admits he, he has a long heroin uh, addiction. That's sad. It's very sad. Yeah, those are fixable, takes a lot of work, but people have done it. Um, yeah, so I guess Cher's had it. Um, Cher did not respond. Oh my well, God. I'm sure she didn't. <laughs> yeah, he's now back at rehab after a tumultuous six months at the Chateau Marmont. Ward's hotel staff regularly reached out to Cher due to his apparent drugged out appearance. Virtually every morning and afternoon, he could be seen in front of the hotel on the sidewalk, either leaning against the wall or sitting on the sidewalk smoking. He would come out with a full cigarette. By the time he finished it, he would be passed out. Wow. It, always, it always looked like he was, it was dipped in something. <laughs> he looked strung out <laughs> and messy, like he was a homeless person living on the streets. Wow. That's terrible. <laughs> and at 77, she does not need to be worried. You know, yeah. somebody should be taking care of you. Checking in on you. But no, Elijah is running up a bill at the Chateau Mall. Isn't she dating a guy younger than him? Though? She's dating that man again. Yeah. Oh, she has a new album coming out, or so they say. I tried to do the research, but it came in very late, late breaking news. Mm-hmm. But uh, she's with that guy. Um, and yeah. a lot of people are That's saying he's not good for her. Yeah. I don't know what's going on there. I don't have any inside in highways. I got no inside tracks. Moonshine. Mm. Mm-hmm. Moonshine. Um, that was all my queen news. Yeah. Update. That is not all your queen news. What? Oh, Tay Tay. Sorry, I forgot. Wow. Tay Tay. Kelsey. <laughs> wow. I will. It's a lot of queen news. Wow. Sorry if you hate this section. <laughs> I'm, I apologize in yeah. advance because it was long. Um, Tay Tay's mama. No, Kelsey's mama, Donna. Mm-hmm. Kelsey's mama, Donna. Why isn't that her song? Um, yeah. Has endorsed Tay Tay. But let's say you didn't like her. It'd probably be best not to say that. <laughs> I Unless you want 20 million, 20 and 30-somethings, in your and 40-somethings in your front yard saying you're an asshole, I would just say, 
<laughs> even if he, even if she was um, some, I'd go wonderful gal, wonderful lady, <laughs> wonderful lady. Wonderful gals. Or does Donna live in Wisconsin still? No. The mom. No. Where do they live? Where did the where does Donna Kelsey live? <laughs> oh, they're tracking her. Oh no, the children are coming. The children are coming. The children are coming. <laughs> oh God, she has no idea what she's gotten herself into. Aren't they from Wisconsin? She lives in Orlando. Orlando. Yeah, she likes it there. <laughs> How odd. Are they from Wisconsin originally? Uh, no, they're from Cleveland Heights, Ohio. Ohio. Yeah. Okay. They went to University of Cleveland. They went to University, University of Cleveland. Cincinnati. No, 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 Cincinnati. Cincinnati. Yeah. The boys did. Yeah, they're from Cleveland Heights. Hmm. Okay. Well, Tay Tay's from Pennsylvania. They should get along just fine. They're neighboring states. Exactly. And right. And his brother plays for the Eagles. I know the guy plays for the Eagles. The other Kelsey, and then there's a man. If you don't follow football, on the Eagles. A running back, and his last name is Swift. So Kelsey was standing next to Swift in two stadiums at one time. <laughs> it's just enough to make your head blow off. If you don't um, follow football, don't worry, I won't dwell on it. But um, I am. they <laughs> pan to her more than they do the announcers or the replays, yeah. and I love every minute. You know who's jealous? Little crybaby, whiny, whiny little bitch Aaron Rodgers. Yes. He's co- so whatever, uh, uh, Kelsey, Travis. Travis. He did a commercial to go get your booster shot. Mm-hmm. For so COVID. It, for COVID, and Aaron's not playing because he's old and snapped his ACL, and he thinks he's coming mm-hmm. back. And so he's already going on podcast, calling. He's so jealous of Travis. Yeah, he is. It's attention. <laughs> That's all he wants is attention. I truly believe that. Um, he's saying that he's calling him Mister Pfizer oh. because he did the commercial. Come on. Yeah, you're the one that said autonomy, Aaron. Uh-huh. You're the one that said we should all be able to do what we want. Nobody should bitch about the uh-huh. other thing. Okay, you don't get vaccinated. No. Nope. Fine. Nobody's who, who's nobody's bitching at you. You take your ivermectin. You take your ivermectin, <laughs> and you listen to what Joe Rogan says. You do you. Yeah. But if he chooses to do an ad because he wants to get the booster, but he wasn't saying it. it's it's never with Aaron like in a buddy buddy funny. I'm teasing my friend way. No, he's like, uh, yeah, Mr. Pfizer didn't get too many yards because he was saying basically he played like shit. Yeah. Which he did not. He played fine. He could have played better, but he's a little distracted. Hello? <laughs> so, I don't know, though. Tay-Tay's got to go on a world tour. We'll see. It's a good match. I like it. Well, they're both very successful. They both have their own money, so you have to worry about, does this person want my money? Mm-hmm. But um, at Ohio, Pennsylvania... That's where she was born and then didn't move down to Tennessee till she was like 16. That's mm-hmm. fine. Um, I just think once she goes on a world tour, he's young enough and rich enough, he can pop up in some of those cities. But mm-hmm. take it from a lady who's been on the road. You, 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 you need somebody dragging you down somewhere else. Whoa! You got to be free. Whoa! Yeah. The only one who mastered that is Dolly. She <laughs> told Carl, you stay your own ass at home and keep that asphalt company. You keep it nine to five. I don't want to hear from you. <laughs> Carl and his <laughs> asphalt company. That's hilarious. Carl's gaming. Update! Update. Update. Um, the real life Jetsons. You know I've wanted flying cars since this podcast has began, and I don't understand why we do not have them. I just don't. It's crazy. I also don't understand why we don't have a bullet train up and down the Las Vegas Strip, but that's a whole other matter. It floods. No, the bullet train goes, it's up here. It's a flood like that. No. Experts say we're on the cusp of a flying taxi boom, taxi boom, with futuristic vehicles set to make the skies at the Paris Olympics next year. <laughs> now, you can't get too overexcited, though. Okay. Well, because there have time, been times, Super Bowls, in the Olympics, and things like that, where someone has come in on a, in a jetpack. And I got all excited thinking we were, those were going to be issued to the mainstream general public like myself. Nope. No. Nope. Never happened. Um, the days of the flying taxis are being consigned to fiction will be over in just a few years. The Paris Olympics are coming up. I don't know, 2024. 
Under uh, a year from now, the first commercial air taxi will ferry visitors trips around the Paris around Paris at the 2024 Summer Olympics, finally heralding the arrival of the technology. That's awesome. Yeah, it's a new revolution coming. I've waited since I was a child. You can't show me the Jetsons when I'm five and tell me that's going to happen. <laughs> well, act like you acted like it was going to happen. Nobody said, hey, this is all bullshit. This is never going to happen. Right. I believed it. Right. I'm like, my, and what was his dog name? I can't remember the dogs. I love the dogs. The Jetsons. The Jetsons dog. His dog, Elroy. Da-na. Yeah. His son, Elroy. Oh, that was his son? Yeah. Well, I'd have rather it been two dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Astro. Astro. That's right. Um, that this guy said, if we go outside at the moment and look up into the air, it's mostly empty. And now we, <clears throat> we will have technologies to make much more use of that environment than we have in the past. Investors around the world are pumping millions of dollars into flying taxi projects, which are going through various stages of testing. Vertical air, we've covered all this. Mm-hmm. Um, VTOL aircraft can take off straight up into the air rather than having to build up speed. That's what I, oh no, yeah, we can't have the ones that need to build up speed. No. We need to go like an Osprey. Up, wow. <laughs> up, up. Very specific. Yes, yeah. then forward. Mm-hmm. We, we don't have enough area. No. No. Yeah. This, this people, the, this vertical aerospace, they have it so it goes up. Right. So just know. You'll get in. You'll get in. You'll, yeah. brrr, you'll lift. Levitate. You'll levitate, like Lou <laughs> said. Did I ever tell you? That is it, this, this, I, don't, I will never forget this because it makes me laugh so hard. A few years ago, Lou decided he was going to try to, quote, exercise more. Lou is black. <laughs> <laughs> he won't even care if I tell you this story. <laughs> Lewis has never been in the inside of a gym in his life. No. No. But he does walk around New York City, and he plays golf. Like, he does stuff, but he's not a workouter guy. Like, he doesn't even have the proper clothing. The one time I said to him, let's go to the gym, he came around the corner in these khaki shorts. I don't don't even know. The tennis shoes were not, no, 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 no. Um, Well, he went, there's kind of a fancy hotel in Los Angeles, and he went down to the front desk mm-hmm. and asked the lady if they had a gym. She said yes. And he asked if it had a levitator. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, Lou, I don't know what that would mean. Does that mean like in The Exorcist? Do you think you're just going to rise? And he goes, oh, you know, the thing mm-hmm. with the handles and the, and the steps and the... I go, do you mean an elliptical? <laughs> well, uh, yeah, that. I said, or a levitator. Wow. I cannot walk into a gym anywhere in the United States and see those machines and not start laughing because he thought that was the called a levitator. levitator. Nice. And I said that, he goes, she said no, so I went back to bed. <laughs> I tried. There's some 20-something at the desk. A what? <laughs> a levitator. And then he'll get frustrated, and he's loud anyway. Where he'll go, you know, a levitator. <laughs> like if he screams it, it's gonna. She's gonna understand it more. No. And she's like, "Yeah, we don't have any of those." So he went right back to bed. He used that as the excuse. Well, I had to go back to bed. <laughs> no, he didn't. But... No. Update, 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 update. Sam Bankman Freed, <gasps> little crypto crypto man. Mm. He's in so 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 much trouble. And then we talked about his parents are are, are in on it now because mm-hmm. they took a ton of the money and spent it on all this shit. Yep. He paid Tom Brady, Tom, my Tom. Well, Tom, I don't have his candle anymore. No, um, we'll bring it back out. $55 million for a week worth of work. What? Yeah. What did he do? Tom, he made those FTX commercials. Oh, right. Remember? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Started it all. <laughs> yeah, well, this is when he was, little did Tom know, Sam knew things weren't good at this point. Yeah, so he was just spending the money like crazy. It didn't even matter. Um, Michael Lewis, who wrote Going Infinite, The Rise and Fall of a New Tycoon, told 60 Minutes that Sam Bankman Fried, whose federal trial on fraud is set to begin, uh, it began today, as a matter of fact. Yeah. Yeah, this is last week's article. Yeah. Um, he splurged on endorsements from Tom Brady, Stephen Curry, and Larry David. Mm-hmm. He paid Tom Brady $55 million for 20 hours a year for three years. Wow. Oh. Wow. Lewis, who shadowed 
Bankman freed for those fateful months during which his company went bankrupt and he was arrested and indicted, told CBS um, that Brady re- initially reacted with sadness after learning Bankman's freed fall from grace. He really liked him and really hoped that he brought, and really liked the hope that he brought. You know, how many of these, <laughs> how many of these young guys in hoodies sleeping in beanbag chairs, eating Cheez-Its that become, quote, billionaires overnight with the crypto or the bullshit or whatever, how many are people going to keep believing? Right. I, it's like we're in an era of it. Mm-hmm. And then another guy, I watched GameStop on Amazon or Netflix about how the kids did all that. Uh-huh. I'm not saying it wasn't smart. It was really smart. But y- y- you got away with it once. Mm-hmm. I, is it going to, like, I don't know. It's a um, children. It's a children. <laughs> well, this guy, this guy, he's all, he could go to jail for 110 years wow. for what he's done. Brady said, now, he tricked me. I'm angry. I don't want to have anything to do with it anymore. Now, excuse me, why well, go spend $150 million on exactly. yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, I doubt you're giving it back. Um, so that's that trial. I'll keep you updated, though. It's starting. That's awesome. And the parents should be, I don't understand how they're not, like, on trial. They should be. You spent it, too. Yep. You know where it came from. It. Unless you're going to play dumb and say, oh, I just thought my magical child... <laughs> God, if I had, if I even showed up with a, a, a Porsche today, I kind of money, my parents would be like, now where exactly did this come from? Exactly. Like they would think I did something bad if all of a sudden I had $3 billion. They would question that. Right. They wouldn't just take it. I know they wouldn't. No. They would want to. I'm yeah, very would, aware of that. Update! <laughs> Shakira, Shakira, oh, Shakira. No. Her hips don't lie. But her tax returns may have. <laughs> Boom! I've been waiting to say that all week. <laughs> Shakira charged with $7 million tax evasion by Spanish prosecutors. <gasps> I knew if you listen to this podcast, we talked about this a long time ago, but they hadn't officially charged her. But there was rumors. Yep. She's in the trouble box. Wow. Shakira, Shakira. <laughs> Shakira. Shakira. Barcelona. Barcelona. Spanish prosecutors have top charged pop star Shakira failing to pay $7.1 million in tax on her 2018 income. Wow. Yep. She's Colombian. She's, yeah. a, she's alleged to have used an offshore uh, company based in an tax haven to avoid paying the tax. Barcelona prosecutors said she's been notified of the charges in Miami where she lives, according to the statement. She is already due to be tried in Barcelona in a separate case that hinges on where she lived between 2012 and 2014. In that case, prosecutors alleged she failed to pay $15 million in tax. Oh, boy. <laughs> this going to be a lot of road shows. I feel a lot of road shows coming up. A lot of dancing. <laughs> Your hips better be good. Mm-hmm. They better be working. Um, prosecutors in Barcelona alleged that the Grammy winner spent more than half of the 2012 and 14 period in Spain and therefore should have paid taxes in that country, even though her official residence is the Bahamas. Come you on. live in Miami. Your official residence is about Bahamas. You're in Spain haven. half the year. Yeah. Right. It's, it's a, a yeah. Uh, she doesn't, uh, she's made no comment and her people won't. They said she's always been in, in accordance with the law. Doesn't sound like it. It doesn't sound like it. <laughs> <laughs> Shakira, whose full name is Shakira Isabel Mibarak Ripoll, has been linked to Spain. She started dating the now retired soccer player Gerard Piquet. The, I'm sure I said that wrong. Sorry, Gerard. Sorry. They have two children. They lived in Barcelona until last year when they last year when they ended their relationship. Shakira is single. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh. Um, Spain tax authorities have passed a year of crackdown on soccer stars like Lionel Messi, Cristiano Ronaldo for not paying their d- 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 full due in taxes. Those players were found guilty of tax evasion but avoided prison time thanks to a provision that allows a judge to waive the sentence for under two years in life for first-time offenders. But here's the problem. She cures me a second-time offender if the 2012 thing happens. And then what? I say, you don't put her in prison. What a waste. You get her ass out on tour and make her pay it back. Exactly. Update! <laughs> Moving on. Moving on. Shakira. Shakira. Speaking of crazy, let's just talk about... Not that Shakira is crazy, but... We've had a lot of crazy on this podcast so far, podcast so far with Elijah Blue living at the Chateau Marmont. 
being looked like he's been dipped in something. I don't even know what that means. Um, we freed Brittany, and now I'm not 100% sure we should have. <laughs> it is not going well. Freedom is not going... However, I will always stand by my statement that I know people personally that are crazier than Brittany, and they are out. Yeah. Yep. They're not you know, where's the line? They can't have knives, but... Well... Brittany got a hold of some knives. That's the problem. <laughs> Brittany got some knives, and she was doing a crazy dance on Instagram with the knives. And you, when you'd hear them click, you're like, those seem real. Big right. kitchen knives. Like machete, not machetes, but like big giant cooking kitchen knives. Yeah. Then she said, don't worry, the knives aren't real. Then there's a video of her on the next day on Instagram, and she has Band-Aids all over her because she cut herself. <laughs> Freedom. Freedom is not going well. No. no, I feel bad for her. I just don't think this lady can get it together. No. And if it's mental illness, it's hard. And who's going to help her? You can't trust. She can't trust her mother. She can't trust her father. Her little sister's on the dancing show or some shit. Mm -hmm. She's yeah. taking advantage of the whole yeah, ride. Mm -hmm. She needs a whole different family. She needs to go to Minnesota and find a nice Lutheran family. That's what I've decided. Somewhere cold mm -hmm. where you'll behave more. If you're in the sun a lot, you're going to go do crazy things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think a nice, the, I say that because I know the Lutheran Church took a lot of uh, um, immigrants when they didn't have a place to go, and then they hooked them all up. <laughs> Lots of Somalians. Um, yeah. <laughs> Can you, I know you're going to take all the Somalians that during that period when Somalia was having a problem. Is there also, does anybody want Brittany? Yeah. Family? 41-year-old <laughs> blonde thing? Good. She can make a fine living. Mm-hmm. Loves her dogs. Update! <laughs> she has a lot of dogs, and they're in the background of the video, by the way, the dogs. I was really hyper-focused on the dogs. Little, little fluffy things. They're little fluffy things. Yeah. yeah, I don't know what they are. But they were looking at her with the same amount of shock and awe I was. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> and even the dogs were like, <laughs> nobody was even barking. They were just, no. like, staring with their... Oh, my God. Some This is Madison, Madison Wisconsin. The Wienermobile is back after the short-lived name change. We talked about this. Some some reporter, <clears throat> whoever wrote the story, it doesn't say, waited their whole life to write this line. Some names are just the worst, W-U-R-S-T, as in ah, bratwurst. Uh -huh. that? Ah. Just four months after announcing that the hot dog-shaped Wienermobile was changing its name to the Frankmobile, the distinctive oh. Wiener on wheels is reverting to the original. Yeah, it's the Wienermobile. Nobody orders a Frank. No. Is that an old timey term? Who's? Frank. I've never. I know they're called ballpark Franks, but you don't go up and go, "Can I have a Frank?" You say, "Can yeah. I have a hot dog?" Yeah. Especially in the Midwest, a hot dog. A hot dog. A hot dog. <laughs> Who's that? A hot dog. A hot dog. A hot dog. Can I have a hot dog? <laughs> dog. Dog. Oscar Mayer. Um. Announced Wednesday on Instagram that Frank Mobile is toast. The Wiener Mobile rides again. Good. That yeah. should have stayed that way. Yeah. Nobody said that. Nobody knows what um, Frank, Frank Mobile is. It's headed. Uh, the Oscar, Oscar Mayer was headquartered in Wisconsin, Capital, Madison for nearly 100 years before it moved to Chicago oh. in 2015. First Wiener Mobile was created in 1936 and has gone through several um, incarnations since. The most famous person to ever drive one? They're called hot doggers if you drive one. Uh, U.S. Speaker, U.S. House Speaker Paul Ryan. Wow. He drove one for a summer in college. And then well, what happened? He's from Wisconsin. Yeah, well. well, he had a summer job. Yeah, you would have to be nice and kind. Right? Well, maybe he was super friendly as a, as a hot dog person. Sense of levity. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Holy shit, they found it. <laughs> Holy shit. This is amazing. God, I couldn't control myself. Castle worker finds world's oldest scotch once enjoyed by Queen Victoria in the cellar of historic Scots Castle. It was already a century old when it was hidden away for more than 90 years. Oh, my God. Now 40 bottles of the world's oldest scotch have been found during a clear out of a castle cellar. The whiskey once enjoyed by Queen Victoria. She was a little short, chubby one. Yep, she was. Look at her throwing back some... Scotch. <laughs> yeah, it was found in a hidden room in Blair Castle, Perthshire. I don't know where that's at. I think somewhere in Scotland. Trustee Bertie Trout unearthed the treasure trove 
when he moved an old door wedged against an opening to reveal the forgotten cellar. How great oh, wow. would that be? That would be awesome. He discovered the bottles in, covered in dust and cobwebs with a plaque on a shelf stating that they were cast in 1833, bottled in 1841, and rebottled it in 1932, making it the world's oldest whiskey. It's the oldest whiskey in the world. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. It's hard to put a value on this sort of vintage. It's literally history in a bottle. It's unlikely we'll see anything like this again. The remaining bottles will form part of a display for visitors at the castle. They look so magical with all the dust and history pouring out of them. Uh, I'd be tempted to open one. Yes. Just one. Just one. Just one. Yes. Yeah. After dinner. <laughs> come on. Come on. Just one. <laughs> This, I got to go to Norway. That's, <laughs> I got to get to Norway. Yes. Just days after it was revealed that a man with a metal, take, a metal detector made the gold find of the century. Where'd you hear about that? Oh, on this podcast. Breaking we news. talked about this man. Yep. In Norway, a family in the country has made another un- unprecedented discovery using the same kind of device. The family was looking for a lost gold earring in their garden with a metal detector when instead they discovered artifacts dating back more than a thousand years. Oh my God. I know. Wow. This is crazy. Awesome. My dad used to tell me if I dug a hole in the yard deep enough, I would get to China. Yeah. Right. We have that in Canada. Did you have it in yeah. Canada? <clears throat> well, I dug a lot, <laughs> and I didn't find shit. These people wander out with looking for an earring and find <laughs> Thor, God of Thunder's wallet. <laughs> Look, it's Thor's wallet. No, it's got his idea and everything in it. Um, the Asavik family was searching for lost jewelry in their home in Jobfrudlin, Jobfrudlin. But as soon as they turned the metal detector on, they stumbled upon a bowl-shaped buckle and another item to be part of a Viking area burial. Wow. <sighs> image of the count, image posted the council show the family with a, a clasp and a buckle and intricate engravings on the side of their discovery. The discovery was made in the middle of the garden under a big tree. Experts believe the two metal artifacts were used in the woman's burial from the 9th century. Wow. They're believed to be first Viking era discovery in Jamfrudland, an island off Norway's southern coast. Experts knew there had been a settlement dating back many years, but the available evidence previously only existed to the early Middle Ages. Wow. <laughs> they did everything correctly and contacted us first, officials said. <laughs> yeah. This guy, the dad, he's 51. He just bought the metal detector. Um, oh, this is a different dad. He found three nine pendants, three gold. And this is guy we talked about last week. So good for you Norwegians. That's cool. Finding all kinds of crazy stuff. Oh, my God, moving on to news. I never thought in my life I could feel sorry for an alligator. Really feel sorry for it. Let's get ahead of it. Like sad. <laughs> Like, I love to go, everybody, you know, if you've seen my act, I go to the Gatorland every time I'm in Orlando. I'm fascinated with alligators because mm-hmm. on one hand, it looks like they're smiling. On the other hand, I know they could devour me in an instant. Yep. Well, there's an alligator that was found, mm-hmm. and half of the top of his snout mm-hmm. is gone. Really? It's like his eyes, and then it's somebody ate, probably another alligator. Oh. They, eat, they do eat one another. And he survived. He survived. But they didn't know how he was even alive. How's he catching it? I don't know. I don't think he catches thing. I think something lands on his open jaw by accident. It's quite an underbite. Yeah, it's a huge underbite. <laughs> but guess who adopted this alligator? Gatorland. No way. Yep, so now I can go yeah, visit it. I want to see him. Uh-huh. It was wandering around Central Florida with the top half of its jaw missing. Now has a name, too. They named her Jolene. <laughs> Get it? Um, she continues to receive treatment in isolation from the other Gatorland animals. She has gained about, oh, she hasn't gained much weight, according to Crocodilian Enrichment Coordinator Savannah Bone. Uh, Gatorland, which took, I'm so proud of Gatorland. And they have a lot of individual areas where this one can kind of heal on its own. It, they don't put it in the pond immediately with a 1500. That would be terrible. Um, uh, hey, buddy. They chose Jolene from a list of names submitted by park goers and fans of the vir- uh, uh, viral reptile. The park has been in conversation with the animal and human prosthetic makers about how a potential prosthetic upper jaw for Jolene, but has de- decided to hold off while the gator gets comfortable in her new environment and puts on more weight. That's awesome. Yeah. 
Go for Gatorland. We're going to give you a home. Yep, you're going to get a whole new jaw. Isn't that going to be exciting for you? You can act like an alligator again. That'll just be so great. Um, <laughs> my teeth don't meet, so maybe I should go down there and tell them my parents forgot to take me to the dentist for 20 years. And, um, yeah. Yeah. Well, your teeth weren't broken, were they? <sighs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, my gosh. This is a little souvenir. Would you pay this amount for it? $262,000. I would not pay this. It's kind of cool, though. They're making an honest buck from Honest Abe. Two front row balcony tickets from the night Abraham Lincoln was assassinated inside Ford's Theater have been sold at auction for a cool $262,500. Wow. There's a little travel tip for you. Um, if you ever go to D.C. Mm -hmm. and you have an hour or so, Go to the Perform Ford Theater. You'll be performing there. I will be performing mm -hmm. there um, Just a few in a few weeks, yeah. Mm -hmm. But you should go to the Ford Theater. I've, I've been a million times. Yeah. I love it, I love it, I love it. And there's a hundred tours you can take, whatever. And then in the basement, there's a museum. And then across the street is the house where Abraham Lincoln died. They yeah. moved him across the street. Mm -hmm. The beds were so tiny. I would have really rocked it out back then. <laughs> Everybody was so short. Yeah. I'm like, that was my time. Yeah. I missed it. He probably seemed... Back. Oh, he did hang over it because yeah. he was over six foot tall and the bed's like my size. It's like five yeah. foot. And then with that top hat. Yeah, and then you got to take that top hat off. Yeah. The trapeze, trapeze, trapezoid shaped tickets with a corner believed to have been clipped on admission are from the DC Playhouse's performance of Our American Cousin, dated April 14, 1865. They're for seats 41 and 42 with the section D penciled in for dress circle. The tickets offered an unobstructed view of the murdered president who was shot. Ooh, these people. So it wasn't his seats. It's just two that were in the theater, and they oh. had an unobstructed view of him dying. Oh, man. But that would only be if you paid attention. You're probably watching the play. Yeah. And then on all the, it's like a heckler. All of a sudden yeah. you start hearing rumblings, and you're like, what's going on over there? And then you see kaboom. Yep. The president's yeah. been murdered. Oh. The presidential box occupied the Lincolns was also located on the dress circle, more or less directly across the street. From the front row seats represented by these two. The tickets are in perfect condition. I mean, without except the clip part. That's that was, awesome. Yeah. Um, these type of Ford ticket theater theater tickets are exceedingly rare. Auction rec records reveal no other examples offered since their original sale as part of the Forbes collection in 2002. Another rare ticket from the performance, which is kept at Harton's, uh, Harvard's Houghton Library, was used to verify the authenticity of the two dress circle stubs through consistencies. They were not the most expensive wow. for that evening. They rang a total of 75 cents, wow. whereas orchestra seating was priced at $1. Whoa. Whoa. And did they have Ticketmaster fees? No. Everybody's complaining. They should be. I'm sorry for the ticket fees at all my tickets. That's why I keep my ticket prices low. Yep. I saw the fees of uh, what went on with some of these Stevie tickets. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Um. Anyway, you know the rest of the story of Abraham Lincoln. It was a bad night at the theater. He didn't make it. But as a tourist, it's a little side people don't really think about it. They go to the Smithsonian and all the big things, but it's a great tour. And yeah. the thing in the basement's off the museum in the basement, if it's still there, I don't know. I haven't been at least in probably five years. But um, okay, do you have $1.8 million? No. I like it though. Well, did you enjoy the movie Halloween Scared with Jamie Lee Curtis? The shit out of me. I never saw it. Yeah, the last scary movie I saw was The Exorcist. I'm like, oh, I'm done with that now. That whole genre <laughs> can go fuck itself because I'm going to be up for days that thinking I'm shaking in the bed, I'm possessed, I did something, I've let the devil in. I can't, I can't, no. Uh, so honestly, I've never seen it. But the house, it's in Pasadena, mm -hmm. is for sale. Oh. The house that they filmed at, oh you God. can go buy it. Four bedrooms, an avocado tree, and a home pack with charm. Don't worry, there's not been a slasher killer here in years. Ha <laughs> ha A frightening new real estate venture has just hit the market for the upcoming time, upcoming spooky season. Um, yes, the house from the beloved horror film Halloween is for sale. It could be yours for $1.8 million price if the price tag doesn't scare you away. It's in South Pasadena, and we know why it was made famous. So go ahead. I wonder how many people, though, you'd have to really get that straightened out with your realtor. My realtor, Ron Thomas, he could do it. Because mm -hmm. you don't want every looky-loo coming in there that's not really going to buy it. No, you got a pre-qualify or something. Movie, so. 
It's a cult movie. Oh, right. Mm. They're all into it. I mean, it's got a cult following. Yes, I understand. Yeah. A cult following. It's not like a cult of people. I get it. No, it's not a documentary. You would like. um, this is really strange. So, in Los Angeles, if you drive up La Cienega right before sunset, it's very strange. To, there's all these, like, they're not art museums. They're art where you would go buy very expensive things. I always just see rugs and Buddha statue. I never went in one because I just figured I can't, well, afford it, and B, I don't really want it. Right. So, um, right. But there's one I used to drive by all the time. A thief slipped into a ritzy L.A. art gallery to steal an ancient, ancient statue worth $1.5 million with the daring heist caught on a security camera. The bronze sculptor sculpture depicting a cross-legged Buddha was swiped from the Barricat Gallery in Beverly Grove on around 3.45 a.m. on September 18th. The 250-pound artifact goes back to Japan's Edo period, spanning 1603 to 1867, and was believed to have been commissioned as a centerpiece of a temple. Art museum. Hello, people. Right. How does this... I don't... Under, I really think my house is safer with a ring doorbell. <laughs> I, move your shit here. And five queens. Nobody's... Yeah. Nobody, the cats. No. Chapel will not let you succeed. I can't sneak in. I mean, they, he pulled a truck up to the back. Where's your alarms? <laughs> a moving truck, a budget moving truck pulled to the driveway of the gate. A hoodie-wearing driver stepped out, busted open the gate, scurried past the cameras into the gallery. Using a dolly, how did he pick up 250 pounds? That's even on a dolly, that's a lot. That's a lot, yeah. Then he moved the statue into the truck. Process took around 25 minutes. 25 minutes, no one came. The gallery owner is very sad. He said, I prize it so much. I had it in the backyard of my home. When I moved to the gallery, I put it in the backyard of the gallery for everybody to admire and enjoy. Well, he, this guy really liked it. He really liked it. <laughs> he really he admired it. it. Um, this place is, features the largest ancient art collection in the world for sale with other local. Oh, I should have went in there. Damn. That's crazy. Yeah, I didn't really understand what it was. It just looked like a rich person thing. I'm like, yeah, that would just kick me out. Mm -hmm. It opened in 2017. It's, uh, oh, wow, yeah. Well, hold on, though. Here's the crazy part. Okay. I do all this work. Um, he said he suspected the ancient artifact would be virtually impossible to sell without getting caught. Right. Right. Or the guy waits it out. Right. You wait out 10 years. You, you can't just go on the market. You can't take it to a pawn shop and sell it for a few, few, few thousand dollars. It's just not possible. It's like a museum heist thing where what are you going to do this object right now? We're all very curious and puzzled, to be honest. Considering all the po possible outcomes... He expressed that the thief might melt the centuries for bronze. No, he's not oh. going to do that. No. Maybe he wanted it. Maybe yeah. he admired it that much and thought, I want that for my yard. Yeah. It goes next to my plastic flamingo. Mm. Hold on, though, because it gets better. This is the history of the thing. We don't need all that. But, uh. yeah, hold on. Buddha is back. The $1.5 million statue is recovered. What? Yeah, this all happened by the time I did this podcast. Oh, my God. One point million, but mystery surrounds the theft. L.A. police recovered the stolen 250-pound Japanese Buddha statue valued over one point. Um, uh, but the suspect is not believed to be the original thief, and the mystery show shrouds the heist of the centuries-old artifact. Paul Henderson, director of the gallery in Beverly Hills, said the bronze statue was found Saturday night stowed in the bed of a truck with no license plate. Oh we're ecstatic, we're shocked. He said... Uh, he said an anonymous tip was what clued investigators onto its location. The registered owner of the vehicle, identified as Justin Livick, 44 years old, was arrested on suspicion of receiving stolen property. He was cited and released. Wow. Well, why'd you do that? Right, exactly. They said the, uh, the arrest was in connection and the discovery, but he's not believed to be the thief. The theft was reported, well, we all know that. So they got it back. That's somebody crazy. ratted somebody out. Somebody got nervous. I think, and said, what the hell are we going to do with this? Right. We can't sell it. No. We, are you going to go on the show, Pawn Store Stars? <laughs> hey, look what I found. Will you guys give me any money for this? No? Okay. No, okay, bye. No, okay. No? Oh, no? God. Okay. <laughs> Let's talk about, well, this is just, there's, this is just a little, <laughs> this is a tiny announcement. Okay. Two book break book sales, record at Christie's auction. Here are the most expensive books ever sold. Okay. A pair of books by Agatha Christie and Arthur Conan Doyle, once owned by English musician Charlie Watts, 
broke individual records for the beloved authors at Christie's uh, auction house in London Thursday, months after an 800-year-old copy of the Bible earned the title of the most expensive book ever. Wow. Uh, yeah. Cool. An Agatha Christie one sold for 63968 breaking her personal record. And then the Arthur Conan Doyle one was $226,000. Wow. Both books belong well, to Rolling Stone drummer Charlie Rotts, Watts, who died two years ago. Thursday was the first day of the part two of auction of his jazz books and jazz memorabilia. Well, look at this little wow. order. Look at Sneaky <laughs> Charlie Watts collecting Sneaky, <laughs> Sneaky Charlie, getting all the expensive books in the world, throwing them right on his own shelf. Look at you. Yeah, good for you, Charlie. Charlie. Good for you, Charlie. Um, Tupac. An arrest has been made in the Tupac. Yes. Yeah, and I got to start watching the thing about who killed, because it starts out with B. Smalls. If you don't know what I'm talking about, if you're an older termite, um, uh, the rapper thing. Mm -hmm. It's been 27 years. Yeah. Keefe D. was in the car. He admitted he was in the car. Then they find out it's all this other. He bragged about doing it. Why it took this so long. I'm I'm waiting for another documentary that's probably already made at this point. Um, Ice-T said a bunch of shit about it. And it's true. Yeah. It's ridiculous. The brother, Tupac, uh, has taken aim at the Las Vegas detectives after they announced a charge against a 60-year-old gang leader. I mean, he's 60 now. In the murder of the rapper who's been bragging about his involvement for a year. Dwayne Keefe D. Davis was taken into custody. Remember on this podcast, we said a couple months ago they'd gone and searched his girlfriend's house. Yes. Or his house, or I don't know what how they have it all worked out on paper. But um, his stepbrother called the um, arrest... Bittersweet. This guy's been running his mouth for years, so why now? For for us, this is not over. We want to know why and if there were any accomplices. Yeah, I mean. yeah they think it's because he beat up his... They got in a fight. He got yeah. in a fight with his nephew, Keefe D's nephew. Mm -hmm. mm, it'll come out. That's awful. A, a Netflix documentary pre previously named Davis's nephew as a shooter. They're not sure he was the shooter. Okay. But he probably bought the gun. He was in the car. Mm -hmm. He was. He's older than them. Well, he was a Compton Crip gang leader. He even wrote a memoir confessing to his role in the fatal shooting. I mean, they couldn't give you more information as cops. I do not understand. I'm not dogging the cops day by day. But right. as an investigation, this was dog shit. It's sad. He claimed in 2018 documentary he was riding in the car with his nephew, Orlando Baby Lane Anderson. <laughs> Kathleen Baby Shoe Medicaid. <laughs> and handed him the murder weapon before he fired. Cops say that Davis started to devise a plan to kill Kish Shakur and Marion Suge Knight after they attacked his nephew at the Mike Tyson boxing match. They added the rapper and his manager were with the members of the Mob Piru, Mob Piru gang, and they knew that the shooting was a gang investi investigation from the offset. Wow. Yeah, go watch the Netflix thing. It's amazing. We'll it but now he's arrested. And I think he's going to be found guilty. And speaking of Vegas, the sphere has opened. Is everyone so familiar good. with the sphere? Mm -hmm. Do you go on Instagram? Kind of obsessed. You seen? I'm a little obsessed with it because yeah. one, it's one day it was a, it's a giant uh, round building they've created. It's a performance pl place in Vegas, but they could do all kinds of crazy things in there: IMAX movies and whatever they want. Yeah. But it's a giant circle. I saw it being constructed a while back. But I didn't really understand what it was. One of, one of the times I had to go work. Um, but a couple weeks ago, it was an emoji. And it was a, it was a smiling face. And it was bl blinking really slowly. Oh my goodness. And then it fell asleep. Yeah. And that's when I decided it's my leader. <laughs> I want to live by it. I want to <laughs> get out in the morning. And I would do whatever it said. Because it's so big. Like, if it came out and he was on fire and he had, like, little devil horns and he had pitchforks going like this, I would be like, yes, we're angry today, okay? We're angry. What should I do? What should I do? I wait for a command. <laughs> but when it fell asleep and then it winks at you at the end, it went, eh, I oh. fall. It was wonderful. Uh, now, they was, uh, you're it, a leader. it was open and <laughs> U2 is the band they chose. I mean, I'll go see you two. They're fine. Yeah. Bono's a little in love with Bono for Bono's my taste. Fine. I know. 
I read a review. Somebody, uh, some guy went, a, a reviewer person. He said it was boring and depressing. And that they looked like tiny little dots. And everybody's so obsessed with looking at the rest of the place because there's just shit everywhere, above you, beyond you, on the side of you. So is that still happening while you're doing Yes. Oh, well, I mean, I guess you can choose yeah. if you want. The, but if you're doing One Love, one that song, which I never even liked. I like Sunday Bloody Sunday. And then let's start marching and shooting. And, and I'm so sick of it. Ba, da, 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 da. That's a good Irish rebel song. Um, <laughs> this guy wrote, I'm going to tell you what it was like. For several years, a mysterious sphere, spherical structure has been rising in the skyline of the desert playground, teasing visitors in recent months with its wraparound LED screen, transforming the giant orb into a planet, a basketball, or most distractingly, a blinking eyeball. I didn't love the eyeball. I liked the tennis ball. They did that for the US Open. Two billion, two point three billion dollar venture. That's how much it cost. Made his public debut with two concerts by U two. Does it live up to the hype? Uh, this guy says yes, yes, with a few caveats. Descri describing the Sphere concert experience is a challenge because there's nothing quite like it. The effect is little like being in a giant planetarium or a juiced up IMAX theater inside a giant spaceship. Built by Madison Square Garden Entertainment, it's being billed as the world's largest spherical structure. I say that a lot. Sure. It's hard. 366 feet tall, 515, 516 feet wide. Wow. Yeah. Um, That's crazy. I would go. I just wouldn't pick you two as the blast off band. Mm, no. I think a lot of people are fine. With, they're like, yeah, I'll go. And then they have their fanatics. Imagine dragons are fun. The drums, the drums in there would be great, oh, but cool. yeah. yeah, they're doing twenty five shows there, and then I don't know what. Oh, next week brings the premiere of Postcards from Earth, a film by Darren Aaron Fosky that promises to take full advantage. That'd be cool. It's an immense tour of the planet. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> more concerts in twenty twenty four. Yeah, so. The, t the U2 tickets, there were some as low as 150 200 bucks. So if you wanted to go cool. to just get in the sphere, mm -hmm. and then you're going to get your beer that's $27. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Everything's a tall beer. Um, yeah, Everything. I know. Hot. Um, do you have $65 million? <laughs> <laughs> I just love that there's this many rich people out there just pissing money away. Oh, an Abraham Lincoln theater ticket. Yes, how much? Quarter of a million? No problem. Sixty-five million. Christie's is gonna sell um, a Monet. Wow. Oh, yo, 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 young water lily painting wow. in November. Wow. Mm-hmm. Two meters wide by one meter tall. It was in his estate when he died in 1926. It's been in the same private collection since 1972. As far as we can say, tell, it has never been seen publicly. Which wow. also means it's in great condition. Cool. We well, don't know. What if the people in that house smoke tons of cigs? <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> I think that's that's crazy. Now, see that I could, I could understand buying because it's an investment and you could have it in your house. But then think of all the security you'd have to have for your house. It would just be crazy. Yeah. Because people would know you have it. The bad people would know that. Incredible. Speaking of art museums, <laughs> and then I'm gonna. Oh, look, I got two more stories that then we finish. A German museum employee has been caught shamelessly swapping out original pa paintings for fakes to fund his lavish lifestyle. What? I do not understand <laughs> what is going on at art museums. <laughs> like, can we have a meeting? I'm not even in your world. No. People are walking out with 250-pound Buddhas. People are throwing paint and spaghetti at shit. Nobody's stopping them. Soup. Soup. <laughs> I mean, it, <sighs> this guy... It's amazing. He spent the money on a new apartment, wristwatches, and a Rolls Royce. What? Yep. A German museum employee has confessed to an audacious, audacious scheme after he was caught swapping out paintings with forgeries and selling the originals to fund a luxurious lifestyle. He's received a suspended prison sentence of one year and nine months and must pay back the $63,500 to the German museum. Oh He's a 30-year-old. He stole three paintings while working at the museum in Munich as a technician. He replaced the paintings with fake while they were in storage, consigning the originals to a Munich auction house. He sold them. 
How is there not one fucking camera? Hey, what's that guy doing? Yeah. Looks to me like he's taking a art painting down and putting one up that looks very much like it. Is that cool? Oh my god. I mean, the th- things that are going on. Wow. Yeah. After two more fa- paintings were switched out as fake, they kind of caught on. After tell- attempting to sell a fourth one at another Munich auction, he was unsuccessful. We regret that the works were stolen. We cooperated closely. I mean, we well, they sold the three. They're gone now. You have to beg for the general public to return them. Right. The defendant shamelessly exploited the opportunity to access the storage room in the employer's buildings and sold valuable cultural assets. In or- okay, well you, you, let, you don't have cameras in your storage rooms where right. you store paintings. Exactly. He was a technician. I don't know what that means in an art museum. I don't know. He had a gig there, though. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's a termite. It's just amazing to me. Do we have any art tech termites? I would think there would just be... Cameras everywhere. Well, I assume there's cameras everywhere, everywhere you go. Right. But especially in an art museum. That's ridiculous. Now, this lady... Then we're going to do lyrics. <laughs> this lady gets apple... I don't have it any. I have a Mac Air Pro, and I like it. Uh-huh. But I don't. I have a, an Android. I don't have an iWatch. I don't. I have the oldest Fitbit ever made, and I got the rest of them on IEP because I know the children will hoard them from me, and then they'll jack up the price because uh-huh. they know there's old people like me that are going to say, I have to have that Fit. I can't learn a new Fitbit. Right. Can't do it. You do have an old one. Yeah, it's very old. It's on right now because uh-huh. I took a giant walk. See how 4.6 miles. Whoa, look at me. 12,400 steps. Boom. How'd I do that? Yes. Anyway, I do understand, though, that Apple people are in love with their stuff. I am. All right, you love it? Mm-hmm. I'm very impressed that my 75-year-old Uncle Jim, Jim Madigan, mm-hmm. my dad's brother, he has an iWatch. I was shocked. Awesome. Yeah, Did he just like doesn't it? seem like a techie guy. No. A pipe fitter his whole life. <laughs> just, you know. <laughs> yeah. He's like, yeah, I get all the messages from the kids, the new breaking news. I'm sitting here with my Fitbit. I'm like, fuck, I'm a lot younger than you, and I'm, I'm not doing any of that. Maybe I'll go get the Android watch. Really turn some heads. For my Android 4. <laughs> this, um, I've gone into the Apple store, though, because of my Mac Air book. The one in Nashville down on Broadway. It's a... Uh, it's crazy. It's so busy. And the guy was telling me, and I won't say his name, the guy that works there, that it's a lot of drunk girls on Broadway. The bachelorette parties, mm-hmm. they drop their phones and the screen breaks, and they can't not have it for the whole bachelorette party. <laughs> so they'll pay crazy fees yeah. to have it expedited mm-hmm. to fix it. Stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. I'm on vacation. <laughs> what am I going to do? Fix my phone. I'm um, because they put it in the middle of all the honky tonks and bars, and I'm like, really, really, Apple? <laughs> Is this gonna? Are people gonna go? Oh, I think you know, in the middle of doing moonshine shots and getting hammered, I'm gonna go buy a new computer. Right. <laughs> really? But it's working. I mean, the place is packed. But I think this lady that I'm gonna tell you about should be featured in their new ad campaign. Okay. <laughs> Woman rescued from outhouse toilet climbing in to retrieve Apple Watch. Oh. First of all, she should get a new watch immediately. Yeah. If Apple cares, this is not that far. No, it's only on. 240 miles north of Detroit. Okay, that's Canada. Bagley Township, Michigan. I don't understand. I've been to the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, and they had toilets. Yep. I don't understand why there's an outhouse involved. Maybe she was camping. She might have been camping. A woman was rescued Tuesday from an outhouse toilet in northern oh. Michigan after she climbed in to her Apple Watch and became trapped. The woman, <laughs> whose name was not released, lowered herself inside the toilet after dropping the watch at the Department of Natural Resources boat launch at Dixon Lake in Ostego County's Bagley Town. So she was launching a boat. That's their bathroom. First responders were called when they heard the woman yelling for help oh, and was removed 
and a strap was used to haul her out. If you lose an item in an outhouse toilet, do not attempt to venture inside the containment area. Serious injury may occur. Yeah, like a heart attack because I'm in a pile of shit. How about that? The police did not say Wednesday if the woman was injured or if the watch was recovered. Bagley Township is about 240 miles northwest of Detroit. Apple needs to call this lady right now. First, she gets a free watch. And then we do an ad campaign with her. How much do you love your... You don't want to encourage the children to do things, but... She should get rewarded I for that. Can't stand the smell of and obviously, she doesn't have a shit ton of money to just go, ah, oh, fuck it, I'll buy another one. She wanted that watch. Maybe, it meant a lot. Maybe she lives somewhere that's hard to get them. She, she, yeah, it could be hard to get. Every time I go down there, to, I see all those sad children. They're always like, yeah, we're sold out of that. Every watch band those kids want, yeah. they're like, yeah, we're sold out of that. While I'm waiting, I go to all of their computers and put my website on. <laughs> And it won't leave till someone else changes it. So I make the whole place at Kathleen Madigan Road road ad. <laughs> and then you take You're going to make me wait. I'll show you what I'm going to do. <laughs> well, I'm going to go to each computer. Oh, my God. All right. It's, li- it's lyrics time. Uh, then I'm going to tell you where I'm going. Okay. This is a song um, from the Talking Heads. Psycho killer. Qu'est-ce que c'est? Qu'est-ce que c'est? la la better. Run, run, run. Oh, 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 psycho killer. Casca say, Casca say, fa la 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 better run. Ay, 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 ay. What the fuck? Yeah. Psycho killer. I remember the song. Casca say. You sang that? Yeah. Rode around in my car, driving around. Psycho killer. Casca say. David Byrne, yeah. talking heads. Then it got hard. Because she, she, wait. I did take high school friends. Je fais ce soir là, ce soir là, relaisant mon espère. Je me lance vers a glory, okay? Yeah, 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 yeah. We are in vain. We are blind. I hate people when they're not polite. Oh my God. That's a lyric. Wow. Let's move on to Tay Tay. <laughs> or as I like to call Tay Tay songs, mean emails. <laughs> Meet me at midnight. Start at the ceiling with you. Oh, you don't ever say too much, and you don't really read into it. My melancholy. I've been under scrutiny. Yeah, oh yeah. You handle it beautifully. All this shit is new to me. I feel the lavender haze creeping up on me. Surreal. I'm damned if I do give a damn what people say. No, the 1950s shit they want from me. I just want to say it in that lavender haze. And they all keep asking me if I'm going to be your bride. The only kind of girl they see is a one night or a wife. I don't know who that was directed at. I like By the way, I finished the Bob Ross movie, The Joy of Painting. Yeah. I would not recommend you watch that if you liked Bob Ross and you enjoyed the painting show. No. It's very depressing, mm-hmm. it's very sad, and it doesn't have a good ending. No. Never buy anything from Bob Ross again. Well, I won't buy anything from Bob Ross again because it's not Bob Ross. Exactly. It's these horrible people called the Kolowskis. Yeah. What piece is it? Utter crap. Mm -hmm. And yes, could they justify it and say, well, we did do this and we did. Yeah, but you know what's right and wrong. And you know that it's kind of wrong. Yeah. You could make a deal with his kid. You don't need all that. Because that that one painting we talked about on the podcast sold for $9.8 million. They they got that money. Mm -hmm. It's awful. Just awful. I don't watch it if you liked Bob. If you don't care about Bob, watch it. It's interesting. So we announced the spring 2024 tour. I always think it's confusing when they say spring, but that's what the agency says, what I have to say. Okay. But it's really January through and April. April. So it's winter to me. I'm like, why aren't we calling it winter? And then I just hear, Kathleen, we're not doing that. And I go, oh, okay. (laughs) (laughs) I don't care enough to fight about it. (laughs) It's the Kathleen Madigan Potluck Party Tour. Nice. Boom. Where are we going? Um. Oh, well, I don't have those dates on here yet. No, because they go on sale Friday. Oh, they go on sale Friday. The pre-sales, the pre-sales today. today. Yep, what's the code? Yeah, the code is potluck, one word. Yep. Okay. And then here's the city where I'm going now. These have already been announced. But in case you forgot, Richmond, Virginia, Charlotte, Des Moines, Kansas City, Virginia Beach, Washington, D.C., Fort Worth, Houston, St. Louis, Denver, second show at it. I thought about like this. Um, Eugene. Portland, my cousin Tommy, Seattle, Seattle, Washington. 
Everything's up. Everything's up. Well, so they're on sale tomorrow for the pre-sale. No, they're on sale today. Oh, today. Yeah. Okay, great. I don't know. I've done so, so many videos and saying so many things. I don't know. I'm a carnival person. I'm a carnival person. <laughs> Jan Arden just goes, good Lord, girl. I know. Jan Arden sees my thing, the list of where I'm going. She's like, oh, my God. <laughs> like Jan goes on the road that hard, too, but uh-huh. she just goes into these crazy areas of Canada where I'm like, where's that city? And it's her and Chris freezing their ass somewhere. Um... <laughs> So I got to go through these things next week. But all right, termites, that's what I got for you. I hope you, oh, here's the thing. There will not be a podcast next week. I apologize in advance, but I'm going to hang out with my dad in between gigs, and I will not be organized. And when I'm hanging out with my parents, it's be a little difficult to concentrate on other things other than what's right in front of us. What I'm really going to do is set up their YouTube TV so that he can watch all the football games. And then the credit card that got canceled somewhere has now canceled their Amazon. We're going to fix all that mm-hmm. and do all kinds of little chores down there. But anyway, I apologize. I cannot in between the road gigs because it's Richmond, Charlotte, and then Des Moines, Kansas City, and I will not be back in um, Nash in Nash Vegas. Mm-hmm. I will be in Na- um, Ozark Vegas. Ozark, <laughs> Ozark, Vegas. Ozarkus. 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 Nice, I like it. <laughs> I will be, you know, Zarkis. People can watch their favorite podcast. Yeah, well, I would recommend Scamanda. No, I mean your favorite of yours. My favorite well, po- podcast of mine, they won't remember. Go go listen to some Scamanda. It's so crazy. You are a terrible marketer. <clears throat> Jesus Christ. I am a terrible marketer. I'm a terrible Don't salesperson, watch too. Don't watch mine. They tried to make me sell ads at my first job, and they were like, because I worked for this magazine because I was a journalism major. And I was supposed to write the stories, take the pictures, and sell the flipping ads. And I'm like, well, I'm not a salesperson. I'm horrible at that. And so, like, the first round came, and I had sold no ads. And they're like, Kathleen? And I'm like, they said no. Right. I called. Mm-hmm. Well, did you keep? I go, no. Because when an adult tells me, no, thanks, I'm good, I believe them. <laughs> you're just an asshole who wants to keep yelling at them. Well, here's some more things you should think of. Blah, blah, blah. You're the kind of people I hate buying shit from. So... <laughs> I'm not a good marketer, even for my own stuff. But a lot of the termites are asking about your fantasy team. My fantasy team in the children's league, I'm destroying hopes and dreams left and right. I'm cool. dominating. I there's people crying. Yeah, you know, but gambling's hard and you need to learn that when you're young. If cool. you're gonna get in the league, yep. prepare. Um, then the next league, I'm doing very well. Cool. The very expensive league with my older nephews, I'm getting trounced. Really? I haven't won a game. I was six points away from winning it last night, and Geno Smith left the game hurt. Mm-hmm. I only needed six more points out of Geno. Geno Schmino, and he was gone. Time to pick up a new quarterback. I have to get a new quarterback for that league. I've just been busy. Busy, 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 busy. Doing little videos. God. Doing videos. All right, termites, that's it. I got to go pack to go to Richmond and Charlotte, mm-hmm. and both of those are fun with Michael Somerville. Good answer. He's a lot of fun. He's a very funny comic himself. Um, We're going to have a blast, so I'm excited about that. All right, that's it.